you think you know Broadway, think again. Today I'm meeting up with the director behind a new documentary to learn more of the secrets behind one of the most iconic theater districts in the world. The whole concept of Broadway, it has this very romantic, very heroic, very legendary kind of feel to it. It's almost incomprehensible, the amount of talent that is on display in that one moment on Broadway. Orin, I am so excited to be talking to you. The film is beautiful. For those who haven't seen it yet, tell me a little bit about it. It's the story of how Broadway almost went out of business uh, 50 years ago. And then what we'd follow in the film is the steps that it took to come back. How does it feel to be releasing this documentary during this resurgence of Broadway? Well, I mean, the story of New York and the story that we tell in the film about Broadway is that it's always reinventing itself. It's like, you just when you think it's down and out for the count, it manages to come back. I am a big Broadway fan, and there was so much that I didn't know I didn't know that I learned watching this. So if you don't mind, can you take me on a little tour and show me some things that you learned while making this? Well, I'd love to, and this is the perfect place to start. So the fact that Broadway is even here is kind of a crazy coincidence of real estate. And the reason is that this neighborhood used to be where the horses and carriages were kept in New York. This was called the Long Acre. The Winter Garden Theater, which is sort of the biggest crown jewel in the Schubert Empire of theaters, was the horse exchange where people came and bought and sold horses. So there was a lot of real estate available when things switched over to cars around the turn of the century. So right behind us is where in 1895, Oscar Hammerstein built the first theater in this neighborhood which was the Olympia Theater. I found it so interesting learning and seeing how Times Square was essentially like the red light district. Well, it was the red light district in the story we tell in the film in the 1970s when the neighborhood got, you know, more crime and the mafia took over a lot of the businesses. But it started out as the red light district back in the 1890s. And they actually called this the thieves' lair. What was it like for you to hear all of these beautiful romantic stories told from these celebrities' perspectives who have such close relationships with Broadway? Well, the actors that we interviewed brought something entirely different to this story because they kind of carry with them the tradition of what Broadway is. And then also just they're really good storytellers. So Oren, what is the most surprising thing you learned during filming? Part of the big success and the thing that's enabled Broadway to come back and be as popular as it is, is that it's found ways to more and more reflect what America's really like. It looks for the stories that are what matters right now, and it's also become more and more diverse. The groups that have not been shown on Broadway, they find ways to make it more and more representative. And it's just such a beautiful representation of Times Square of New York City and just dreams in general. So thank you for capturing all of that and for sharing all of this. This has been such a fun day. Thanks for letting me take you down this, you know, nerdy road of Broadway history. I love it. Anytime.